Hello, it's Sarah. Today, I'm just going to make this short, you guys, but I'm working on another one of those free patterns from the DecoArt website. This one is by Chris Hoy, and it says Autumn Leaves. I might change it to, I don't know what, but um, Welcome Fall or something, but he's such a cute little scarecrow. I fell in love with scarecrows this year when I did this Tracy Moreau. If you go to her channel, her YouTube channel, you can make this too. But today, what I wanted to talk to you about was, so the surface, it's just a plaque, and she's got it on a little stand, and I did it myself, but I printed this out, I cut it out with my Glowforge. So all I did was go to the stock shapes that they had, and so this one was close enough to it, it's not the exact shape, but I cut that out. I prepped it so I put my all-purpose sealer on there I'm letting it dry in the meantime I want to share with you because this is how big it is right so here's the pattern when you have a pattern that's this big sometimes it's it's hard to get it all on one piece of tracing paper generally I don't know they may sell tracing paper that's uh, bigger but this is your average size let me see it's um right here 9 by 12 and this I guess this is a standard sheet that they have at like the, the craft store and I'll bet you they do have um, bigger ones but maybe not at the craft store so all I wanted to show you was all I did was take the first half the bottom and I traced I traced the actual um, outline as well just so I could kind of get an idea of uh, centering it and stuff like that but that's not my shape forget that so I'm done this I'm gonna pull in the second part now a lot of times people will tape these together and then trace them like that and that's perfectly doable uh, let's see I mean one way or the other you'll you'll end up being able to get them all on there but I just wanted to show you so I just traced the first half and now I'll line up the second half so I just go and half the things are on here already so if I line the bird I love Chris's artwork. Her, her artwork makes me happy. So that looks pretty close, and um, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, but I'm going to continue now. And look, I've, I'm able to fit the whole piece on one piece of tracing paper. I mean, not that you wouldn't have been able to anyway, but it's just less fudgy for me to do it this way. So I'm just going around just so that I can line it up again if I need to. And all I need to do is finish his hat. And some more leaves. So, and then my tracing will be finished. You see that? And what I want to show you now, the first part of the directions, there. this is, um, a, a new experience for me I want to show you so if you look at the background and I'm pretty sure it's a stencil that she uses but I'm so excited because it's new and different right you know how I love new so I'm not going to do this whole piece on camera because you've seen me float and do all that stuff but I'm going to do the background I'm going to show you how the background gets done so here's a picture this pattern again it's free on the deco art um, website and I'll put a link in the description box but see first we're gonna just I'm gonna sponge on the color and then we're gonna load an oval wash brush with thinned honey brown and slip slap some of that color on here so it doesn't have to be neat just all washy and then we're gonna stencil um, let's see oh first we're gonna float I don't know I don't know but I'm pretty sure she used I haven't read it straight through okay she's base coating here so mainly um, let's see yeah the Jacobian floral stencil that's what she used now I don't have the Jacobian floral stencil but I certainly have something with all these type of shapes 
Um, so I'm just going to go into my uh, stencils in a minute and I'll pull what I need. Um, but I'm just going to show you this effect and then that's the background. So what I'm loving a lot, you guys, about decorative painting these days, and I don't know when she did this pattern. That's a good thought. Um, because this could be older. Um, I don't see a date on here. I printed it on the first, but it's not, let's see. Um, anywho, people are using stenciling a lot more in their decorative um, painting pieces and also uh, stamping in the background. So that's, that's what I was just so happy to see. So I figured I'd do some of that for you on camera. So I'm going to go away, gather up my supplies, and I'll be right back and we'll be ready to get this background going. All right, this is all been sanded. And I wanted to mention, um, this wood is from Home Depot. It's quarter inch birch. And um, I didn't put any tape on it. So this is the, the burn over that you get from the laser. But I'm not worried about it because we are painting it and also I'm going to be shading around the edges as well. So in this case, I don't need to protect the wood. But like I just cut out this, which is a mandala. They're supposed to be earrings. This is a little big for me, so I'm, I only did one luckily. But this is um, walnut, I think. Anyway, I'm going to try and do this smaller. And it has tape on it so that you don't see the overburn. Anyway, now, it, in the directions it says to use a specialty sponge um, to apply the, the buttermilk. Buttermilk is the base coat. And I don't, I've been looking all over for my sea sponges because I have them. I have tons of them and I just don't know where they are. Um, I put them probably with painting supplies and, or I don't know. So all I was able to find was this and I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm going to wet it because I just like, I don't know, don't want it to be super dry. And I'm just going to go into my paint. Oops, just got water on there. And I'm just going to start patting. And I wasn't sure that the buttermilk would cover the, uh, the overburn, but it's covering it just fine. So I'm just patting this on. And again, this is something that the artist who creates the pattern packet decides in the, de in the design process. And there's so many things you can do, you guys. So, um, Chris, and I mean, this is um, something I've done before. When we did the ornaments, we base coated them with a sponge as well. And I think she just likes that, um, the texture that it gives. So there are so many elements involved that... It isn't one way, you know, or the highway. You, you can do it however you want. I tend to like a very smooth surface when I paint because when I float, it helps me keep it on point, you know. Um, that being said, this is a different way to go. And because it's different, that's why I'm drawn to it in this moment today because um, I I'm trying new things. That is my, I don't know what 2021 will bring, but I'm trying to be in the moment and just go with the flow. So I just didn't want to let um, fall go yet. I'm not ready to paint wintry things yet. Um, this was such a cute pattern. Like I said, I fell in love with that other little scarecrow. I didn't get to go to the pumpkin patch this year. So I'm just going to leave that. I think it's a little bit... Um, transparent in some areas but I think I'm gonna leave it let's see what it says here um, use a sponge uh, and multi-surface sealer lightly sand I did that and then using the same sponge top coat the surface with buttermilk it doesn't say to make it opaque or anything and then we're gonna tr lightly transfer the main tracing lines um, we're gonna transfer the details as needed and then we're gonna do the background which this is what is so cool. This is what we're going to do for the background. We're going to slip slap and it looks real messy. But after it's all said and done, she's going to stencil the next step. And I don't have this Jacobian, let's see what she called it. The stencil is called, 
I saw the Jacobian floral stencil. I don't have that specific specific stencil, but I had these two that were close enough. This is actually called Climbing Vines by Delta, and it's very similar. It has the leaves and the and the um, stems and a few flowers. So I think I might use this. It's not probably as uh, as filled as that one like I might have to do it a few times but I think I'm gonna use that I also found this one this one's just mainly vines there's no flowers on here and I think that would work just fine as well it's much thinner and I'm sure I won't get as clean of a st I'm gonna use this one let me just I'm making my choice and I did get this at a craft store these are the little yellow stencils I think at AC Moore which we don't have anymore I used these on the um, I can't think of the name of it but it's the little the thing that you make papers with as this is drying you can see some of the background is showing through but I like that I'm not gonna go any further I'm gonna leave it so I'm gonna stick my um, sponge in the water and just let it sit in the water for a minute so that when I rinse it off it'll come pretty clean and I'm going to set this over here to dry I just turn on my little fan I have a fan on my desk and the next thing we're going to do is actually trace on just the main uh, it says trace the pattern onto tracing paper and lightly transfer the main pattern lines using transfer paper um, and a stylus. So I'm going to do that off camera. I'm going to come back and we're going to work on the slip slapping, the stenciling, and um, ooh, paper towel. Ooh, wipe the brush over the paper towel to, oh, okay, gently dry brush. Repeat to cover the entire background and let dry. Ooh, then we're going to do something else. Oh, she actually uses this, the same sponge to do this outside area. So I'm just going to complete this background with you guys and um, call it a day. All right, so I'll be right back ready to do the next step. All right, everything's dry and I have traced on the main drawing lines and when I looked at the pictures which is another good tool for you guys look at the pictures and say this one happens to have all the good pictures with each step there's pictures so I left off the leaves but I did put the main tracing lines on uh, the next step is to load an oval wash brush with thinned honey brown using a slip slap stroke cover the background so load the oval wash brush I want to see what size she put down for this oval wash brush because I am going to be using a flat and an oval makes more sense to me like I have I just got this one this is my biggest one I have an, a half inch oval wash let's see what she said here uh, a three-quarter inch oval a three-fourths inch oval wash brush so it's a bit bigger than this but I think I'll be able to get the effect I don't have, I wanted to just share, so this is a three, oh, this is a five eighths, oh geez, anyway. Um, I think I'm good. This is a one inch, she actually wants it smaller, so I'm going to go ahead and do what she suggests. That's the thing. If you do what they say, I'll get the desired effect. So I have honey brown, always shake up your paint. It says with thinned honey brown so I'm gonna put it on my paper t plate and I'm gonna get some water and I'm dunking my brush in the water and then I'm just gonna go right I'm not going to my paper towel and I'm just gonna mix it in there so we're thinning the paint right now it's just gotten way more watery and actually it feels like my paper plate is soaking up some of the paint as well but I'm going to go ahead and do this. And it says, um, slip slap, cover the background. The stroke should softly blend together, creating a parchment effect. So let's just start slapping. 
I don't know you guys look and I'm going right over my tracing I had a lot of paint on the brush so I'm gonna come back over as it dries and I'm gonna pick up some of those strokes everybody's here my dogs I got my bird and you know it's not looking as slip slappy as hers does so maybe it's not as wet I don't know I might need to knock it back oh okay this is looking better you know what I should have done I should have um, rinsed my brush before I did it you know what I'm gonna take a butt wipe and I'm just gonna wipe this off as best I can because I think I know because I'm a heavy hand I don't want to overdo it too soon we still have to um, stencil with this color so I'm thinking it needs to be more like that like a very subtle see look how it's subtle mine was really covering too much so I am going to rinse my brush okay I still have I'm gonna put a little bit more paint out and I'm gonna make my puddle and then I'm gonna rinse my brush off so that I'm just I'm not using any of the paint from my brush right now so see I'll show you what I'm saying I'm just making a puddle and I have a ton of paint on here but I'm gonna just add a little more water and then I'm gonna rinse off my brush and just go into it and load it right from this puddle that's going to be where I'm going to be more successful and now you can see how sheer it is and I'm trying to slip slap slip slap slip slap sometimes when you make the noise it helps but this is I think what I wanted I don't want it to look covered like I'm covering it and I'm kind of skipping over the main I don't need to really go on top of my scarecrow as much because uh, we'll be base coating there but all around where the leaves are gonna go I had to alter the pattern a tiny bit see I think that looks good now I'm happy because um, anyway what was I saying because the, the shape was a little different I um, changed I had to move it over a little so that I got all my bird that was really the only main thing I'm just letting those stroke marks show up a little bit more I kinda like that yeah see this is the stuff that gets me excited you guys I've realized it um, and that's why I do so many different crafts because I feel like I get bored I must get bored you know if I'm doing the same thing all the time I gotta let this dry Wow I like it though yes yes oh I like it I'll be right back when that's dry and we'll do the next step okay it's dry the next step is to stencil so I'm gonna go to number step four says position this floral stencil and secure with painters tape load a stencil brush with honey brown and wipe the brush over a paper towel to remove the excess gently dry brush over the stencil to create the background design repeat to cover the in entire background and let dry so she does go over the whole thing I'm not gonna do that I don't know why look I pick and choose all right so here's my dry paper towel I'm gonna put out a little fresh honey brown and I have Chris's stencil brush so this is again when I bought the my new brushes I decided to get a few of hers since I was painting some of her patterns this is called Chris's spectacular stencil and it's a number five and I'm just gonna go into the paint and pounce it onto the bristles then I'm gonna remove the paint and consider this a dry brush and we're gonna gently I've taped it on and I'm just gonna go around
kind of making little circles and I'm not really focused on going over the scarecrow as much as I'm the background. Now I feel like I'm, I need more paint so I'm just going to lift up. Oh that's showing up though but I see I could go a little darker. So I'm just going to load again. I'm going to take the paper towel and dry it off again. I think I'm going to get a little more paint out. Don't you guys remember stenciling when we used those really stiff brushes? They were so cheap. They were like a dollar. Oh, that's cool. So I just want to make sure I get it down in this area. Um, but this brush is just a really good brush. You can tell it, it moves like it. Um, it's pliable. You want your paint to be dryish because otherwise it bleeds under. And this is a very um, thick stencil as well. So <clears throat> sometimes I don't know if the thinner stencils are better, but I'm getting there. I think I'm going to finish up here because um, that's like right on top of his hat area. Man, this is this just is is cool. It just makes me happy. I might be ready to move it. Let me just go a little darker here too. And here. I think my paper plate, it's just a cheap paper plate. I might need to use something different because I think it is soaking up my my paint into it. All right, I think I'm going to move it. I'm going to need some here and here. So I think Maybe I'll just flip it. Now this is all, I don't need it. I only need it in the little areas there. So what do I want to do? I'm just going to push, put this right here. See, if I had that Jacobian um, one, I could just do the whole thing and it would fill the, the piece, I think. You know what I mean? Because I don't have it, I'm, I'm not able to. Um, I like that, though. Okay. I just need some over here. I think I want to put that flower right here. part of it anyway. I 
I stopped wiping it on my paper towel because I, I don't have enough uh, color. I need more. This is like right above his arm. Um, this is his hat. So I think I'm good because there's going to be leaves all around the edges. I'm going to stop. That's pretty cool, right? I like it so much. It makes me so happy. So let's see what the next step is. Um, number five. Load the side edge of the damp, large specialty sponge with antique maroon, keeping the sponge flat on the surface with the paint facing the outer edge. Use a circular motion to float around the outside edge and let dry. This could be difficult. I'm a little nervous of this, but I rinsed off my sponge already, and I have antique maroon. And if I don't like it, I can always float. Um, I should probably, I'm going to get this dry first so that I don't lose it, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to dampen my sponge, so I just dipped it in the water, and I'm going to give it a squeeze. And she says to kind of side load it, so I'm just going to side edge of a damp sponge. I don't know if that's the side edge, like, right, I don't know. So I'm just going to take and put some in a little there. And then holding that color toward the outside edge, make circular motion to float around the outer edge. Yeah, that's not going to be good. There we go. I had to utilize the, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be my best friend here. It's not working. Well, when I, once I take the sponge and I kind of smudge it, eh, I don't love it though. I, I think I could have probably floated it better. just trying to pick some up but I'm not I don't want to lose all that um, stenciling we just did so I'm trying to I mean I think I did it I'm not thrilled I mean this is all going to be covered I'm just trying to get it off a little. Whoopsie, that was the paint part. Maybe I'll just use a paper towel and kind of brush it back. I missed a part there, actually. I put it in the water already. Dang it. Sometimes, this is why a class is really good, because you can see, like, seeing how she does it really helps you understand it better as well. You know, so let's see, his arm, this is his arm. This is the only patch that's the background. This is the background. That looks good. 
I kind of want this to be less, like, I want to brush it away a little bit. And you can fuss around with this type of stuff, so don't drive yourself crazy. But, like, you know, I don't want it to come too far in. That's why I'm wiping it back. But then you lose the, um, the floated look of it. So I go back in with the color as well. I just didn't want it to dominate too much. It seemed like I got it too much. So I'm, I'm wiping it back. I'm going to make it more subtle somehow. But having the teacher show you, maybe I should have been pouncing. But she said circular motions. I kind of think that looks cool and then I'll um, adjust I'll add floating because I know how to do that much better um, but I'm not hating it now I think I fixed it I can definitely float it so I'm gonna leave it it definitely doesn't look like Chris's it definitely looks more but I can float and get those edges way darker. So um, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to let this dry. And then I'll come back and float it with a big brush. So let me, um, I'm going to let this dry and then I'll come back and show you. And that's the final step for our background. So I'll be right back. All right. So I... There's more than one way to do it, but I really love to try the way the artist suggests that you do. So just know that, you know, especially taking classes is so awesome because you learn a different way that you would not have thought of necessarily, you know. But I'm just going to float. So here, I can just really get the edge nice and dark. So I could have done this instead of the um, sponge technique. But I really wanted to just try it and see what it was like. And I enjoyed it and I got most of it. And maybe, um, what's her name, Chris, isn't the best at floating and doesn't want to float, you know, that area. But because I know I'll be able to get it, that's, that's my go-to little trick there. Look, so I'm going to stick that dark color right there and get it right here see how dark I'm able to get that edge now and there you go I think that's what hers looks like I was able to get it with floating. All right, you guys, so that is how to create a background for a decorative, paint, a decorative painting piece. I am going to continue on with this project. I cannot wait to see my little scarecrow. And don't forget, you can go over to decoart.com and get yourself a free pattern and play. All right, and enjoy this beautiful fall day. It's about 75 degrees in New Jersey. All right, and thanks for watching.